Hey, what's happening, Chuck fans? It's K-Wing here, back with another review of my favorite TV show, Chuck. But if you guys don't really know what Chuck is, here's a recap from last week. Chuck and Sarah have decided to leave their lives as spies to be with one another, and they stay together for a week in a train car. Back in Burbank, Beckman orders Casey to find Chuck using Morgan. Reluctantly, he agrees, and the Awesomes discuss leaving for Africa. Elsewhere, Sarah sees an armed goon, and Chuck flashes on a terrorist. Then, comically, the two try to spy behind each other's backs. Eventually, they decide to work together and make this their final mission. The scene goes back and forth between Morgan and Casey, and Morgan uses a computer and finds Chuck by a comic book stand saying his boy has to read the latest issue of Justice League, and off to Paris the two go. But not first class. Chuck and Sarah drug the bodyguards, Jeffrey arrives at Allie's party, and they blow their amps. Returning to the train, the couple gets arrested, Casey gets double falcon punched in the face, the bad guy gets away, and Morgan uses the Morgan to stop the terrorist. Basically what happened is Chuck made a goof and the terrorist was on his way to witness protection. Casey gives Chuck and Sarah his blessing and the two leave to retire. Interpol comes to relieve Casey but Morgan discovers that they're fakes. Just as the happy couple is about to get on the train they get arrested again and take out their captors and race back to the coffee place where they beat up a bunch of bad guys and in the end end up saving the day and choosing love and career. Back at Castle. Beckman says it's about time. The show wraps up with Ellie coming home to say goodbye to Chuck and she sees Sarah waiting in the doorway. Ellie is happy because she knows that Chuck will not be alone because Sarah is back in his life. Great, now that you're caught up, it's time for the Chuck vs. the Role Models review. But first, a clip. This is my boss, Charles Bartowski, the computer repairman with all the government secrets in his head. Girl Sarah Walker, a CIA agent with more than just killer looks. And when these two spies first met, it was love at first fight. For those of you that don't know, this is actually a parody of an 80s TV show called Heart to Heart. It was a great show, and I saw it on syndication when I was a little kid. That's where I come in. I'm Morgan. It's my job to keep an eye on the both of them. Which isn't always easy. Anyway, the whole mini intro was actually a dream by Morgan. Getting up for a drink, he bumps into Sarah and they have an uncomfortable moment at the fridge. In the morning, Chuck and Morgan exchange some words and Morgan is jealous. Then Chuck asks Sarah to move in with him and she says no. Chuck, feeling a little vulnerable, sees Sarah walk casually over to the couch and BAM! opens it up to reveal an arsenal Casey would be proud of. Still, Chuck's reaction here is all wrong. Isn't Morgan supposed to be a spy now, yet Chuck is worried about him finding a gun? That doesn't make much sense to me. I can understand if they had a child in the house. Example, when I was born, my dad got rid of all the guns in the house, and my grandfather, a retired chief of police, also gave up his firearms when I was born. Although dad never got rid of his nunchucks or knives. Sarah's reply is actually kind of funny as she says, I'm just following the 30 foot rule, Chuck, which is apparently in the spy handbook as later Mr. Turner tells Chuck about the 30 foot rule as well. The next scene shows Ellie and Devin arriving in Africa. Ellie isn't happy, but Devin kinda is. Then we're back to California and Team Chuck has been benched. That and Casey is ordered to field train Morgan no matter what. Thinking they're being demoted, Beckman says that if they're going to be a spy team and a couple, they need to learn from the best in the biz. So enter the Turners, a married CIA super couple. Mr. Turner is portrayed by Fred Willard, and Mrs. Turner is played by Susie Kurt. Next, we see Chuck being a nervous wreck and Sarah trying to calm him down. I actually like this scene because it showed the realness of the couple and that they love one another. At the same time, it also set a contrast to the other couple as they seem to hate one another. Personally, my family said it best about the Turners. They are a snooty, upper-class, good-for-nothings. Fred Willard did such a great job that I actually hated his character more than Emmett, and that's saying a lot. So great job, Mr. Willard. Mr. Turner is such a jerky character. Chuck made him a martini, but he drank it and then said it was terrible. Then he talks about where Chuck could have got real cherries to make the martini better. But Mrs. Turner is just as bad. The first time she says anything is to mock the couple's home before entering it. Then both of them say with disgust, Hey, look, it's us 30 years ago. 
After the couple's exchange small talk, we find out that the older couple has been divorced and remarried several times. Then they get on to business of the mission for the new couple, which is to watch the pros in action. And meanwhile, Casey begins training Morgan at the Buy More, which was pretty funny. Both couples arrive at the party as a family, but Mr. Turner slams Chuck again by saying, on second thought, just Sarah's our niece. Ouch! Inside the party, the true side of the couple shows its age. The Bartowskis arrive at the bar to see the missus drinking her sorrows away, replying with, my partner forgot to turn off his radio. All listen in as the old timer tries to seduce a young woman. The wife then angrily confronts her husband, falls on the ground, and I always laugh when people fall down, especially if they're drunk. Seeing this as an opportunity, the lovebirds decide to steal the chip, so they can prove to Beckman that they're awesome. For the most of the episode, Chuck and Sarah are bickering like an old married couple. No, pun intended. Actually, I need to be careful what I say because my wife is like a stealthy ninja. Sometimes she scares me. While going through some draws, Sarah discovers a tiger in the other room. Chuck sees it, flashes on the collar, and screams like a little girl. Then both hide in a closet. Immediately, it switches back to Casey and Morgan at the Buy More. Honestly, this episode does this a lot, and I rather enjoyed that. I like seeing the two different teams working to complete their objectives. Morgan's next assignment is to get Big Mike's key. Sarah tells Chuck his objective is to get the tiger's collar. The following scene's comparisons to Big Mike and a sleeping tiger was brilliant. Not to mention the Chuck and Morgan comparison was excellent as well. These scenes had goofy, clumsy humor that the fans have craved. Chuck gets the collar, but ends up waking the big kitty by sneezing, since he's allergic to cats. Another thing we have in common, Chuck. Morgan nabs the key card, and Big Mike wakes up. All that was missing from this scene was Casey needed to do a facepalm. Once again, it goes back to Ellie and Devin trying to enjoy a quiet night under the stars in the jungle. Of course, we have another tense scene, this time involving a snake. Then it switches back to the bumbling old spies that aren't so weak after all. They take the chip away from Chera at gunpoint, and after reporting to Beckman, Sarah and Chuck say the super couple have went rogue. Then we see Chuck rushing into the apartment and immediately starts cleaning dishes, kind of foreshadowing what Ellie does when she gets upset. Sarah asks why he does this, and Chuck says this is what the family does when they are stressed. Somehow, they end up thinking that the Turners may still be in Burbank at the hotel that serves the real martinis with the cherries he likes. Sarah cocks her gun and says, this is what I do to relieve stress. Ellie was very lonely in this episode, and she misses her brother a lot. She's trying to adjust to her new home, but she just isn't happy there. She calls Chuck and leaves a message and then gets encouragement from a fellow doctor. Meanwhile, as the Turners are discussing plans for the microchip, Chuck and Sarah surprise them at gunpoint. Inside Castle, Casey teaches the rookie to use a gun. Morgan says it's just like playing Call of Duty, and Casey says this isn't a video game. Morgan fires the gun, then tosses it into the air and screams like Chuck. The two then have a bonding moment, and Casey is becoming a much warmer person inside as opposed to the very first episode where he said, I will shoot you both, leave your bodies here, and then go out for Chinese. All isn't well for Chuck and Sarah, though, as the owner of the tiger arrives at their apartment looking for the microchip. The duo goes into spy mode, but also showcase a humorous interaction as Chuck goes for the guns under the couch, only to learn that Sarah has removed the guns in the house. When he asks her why she did that, she says, because you didn't want them in the house. It wouldn't be a Chuck episode without some type of action. It was a good fight scene, not quite the scale from the coffee shop from last week, but still not too bad. What made this scene exciting for me, though, was Morgan taking on a tiger. Man, that took guts, and even Casey was proud of him. Still ruining the awesome's house is going to have some serious consequences when Ellie gets back. In the end, the Bartowskis say the Turners acted rogue to trick their old enemy into being brought into the open, where the Bartowskis were lying in wait. The Turners then retire, and Beckman says, but you're the best! Who will replace you? The Turners say, them. That was an excellent passing the torch scene, if I do say so myself. Personally, the episode set things up for the next series of episodes very nicely. Sarah moves in, Morgan is still in training, and the Awesomes are returning home. But like all great episodes, the writers added a twist with the ring poisoning Devon, and they aren't quite out of the picture yet. While I was happy with the overall first half hour, I wasn't dazzled by the Ellie and Devon story. Probably because Ellie was anxious the whole time, and I really felt for her character. Ellie was unhappy in Africa and Mrs. Chuck. Some stuff happens, Ellie adjusts, Devin gets bit by a mosquito, and bam, he's out on a stretcher just like in the season promos. I knew this was coming, so I was tense the whole time. 
Other than that, I like the episode. It had an impressive parody, great supporting characters, three different story elements, action, lots of comedy, romance, and suspense. Every week, I'm like a kid at Christmas time, waiting to open my present on Christmas morning with a new Chuck episode. It's that exciting for me. Well, that definitely does it for me, Chuck fans. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to watch next week as Christopher Lloyd guest stars. I will be squealing like a fanboy if Chuck calls him Doc. Well, anyway, my catchphrase, as always, is God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching another Chuck review. Please subscribe, and until we meet again, Chuck fans.